Alright guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here and today we have Intel reiterating their plans for the, well, the launch for Meteor Lake in second half of 2023 and the Lunar Lake will be next year. Also, Intel is reportedly preparing another major driver update which might be increasing the performance, so that's great. AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT is just only 7% faster than the RX 6950 XT. Not really scaling that well, but the pricing is, well, as we all know, is expensive. More than expensive as the 6950 XT. And lastly, we have the direct storage working in Forspoken, but there is a problem, and that is it impacts performance for some reason. So firstly, we have Intel reiterating their plans for the Meteor Lake launch and the Lunar Lake launch, and this is coming from the video cards here, basically sourced from Intel, and Intel showed, uh, showed this chart over here, as you can see, this, that's their plans, and as we see, we have the description here, or a summary, and if you look into it, the February 18th, or 8th, 2023, I should say, 8th, 2023, will be the CPU uh, Intel Raptor Lake 10th generation core mobile uh, launch, basically the official one. The February 15 would be the Intel Sapphire Rapids workstation, so not too far away from getting the Sapphire Rapids finally. Q3 of 2023 is going to be the Intel Alchemist Plus, basically is more of a refresh of the Intel Alchemist, which is again a rumor, but it is a possibility they're going to be doing that. Q3 of 2023 will be another, be another of course, Raptor Lake refresh, and the 2H of 2023 will be the Intel Meteor Lake launch that's the official one and also the emerald rapids basically the uh, successor of the sapphire rapids i guess 2024 however if you look into it we will have the lunar lake launch which is kind of like confusing because we already have the well the 2022 launch of the raptor lake well late 2022 but now we already have uh in 2024 Maybe I'm guessing it's going to be the late 2024 we're going to have Lunar Lake because, you know, it, you should have some gap in time, you know, for uh, architectural changes, engineering, I guess. So, yeah, they might need some time. 2024, we're also going to be having Arc Battle Mage, which is going to be the... I bet uh, Intel is going to make this one better because, of course, they have to. Like, otherwise, they don't have any other choice. We also have Grey Knight or Sierra, basically an official launch... In 2024, so I'm excited about that one. And of course, the other two will be the 2025 plus and 2026 plus coming at Arc Celestial and Arc Druid. Well, I am doubtful because I guess that's going to take, take some time for those architectures to be, uh, you know, architecture, I guess. But yeah, that's all for Intel showing their uh, plan for the future. Next up, we have a PC Games Hardware reporting this, and that is Intel Arc in the post-test. Basically, their 2023 driver has some tests for compatibility, and the games have been tested, and if you look into it, they're pretty positive. Well, if you look into it right here, Intel Arc game compatibility for January 2023, if you look into it, most of the games we're looking at are performing flawlessly, as that is noted here. Uh, but if you look into an F1 2021 has some visual corruption, but it's not a huge or crazy problem. So that's good. They, it can fix it quickly enough. We also have Half-Life 2 problem, which is a transparency AA, which is for alpha test textures, which doesn't work basically. But the rest is working completely fine. And it kind of makes sense because if you look into it, this is a DirectX 9 title. So we already know Arc GPUs don't really go well for the DX9 titles. But in terms of DX12 and 11, they kind of work fine. I mean, for 11, they also use some sort of like, or, or actually for DX9, they use the emulator, not for the DX11. But yeah, in Psychonauts 2, it has a, some some major issues. If you look into it, we have water surface that is corrupted according to the this article here. And basically, both APIs are corrupted for this one. We also missed the Halo Infinite here. Uh, well, we have texture issues, basically, which is kind of big, you know? If the textures are not rendering properly, that's going to be a problem. For Sniper Elite 5, there is no Vulkan API that, you know, can run this game. So basically, it doesn't really... really that's not really the fault of Arc, I guess, maybe. But I guess they need to implement Vulkan. They should. We also have Callisto Protocol, which is... Completely fine, but 
the ray tracing performance is kind of bad, you know, and kind of doesn't really blame, but I guess that's some sort of problem in terms of ray tracing, but I guess they can fix it. We also have Chronicles of Riddick has some visual corruption, which is basically flickering. That's kind of a not a huge issue, but they can fix it, I guess. What's your tree next gen, which is ray tracing supported, by the way, has um well no hair work support, and I guess they need to add it. Like that's all. And lastly, we have the Total War Warhammer Three has some missing effects, which is the bloom, and it's kind of big because you know you need to have some effects for the game. And if it's completely missing, well, it kind of takes away the immersion. So yeah, I can I think they need to fix those parts. But all in all, if you look into it, most of the games in the 66 games, all of them are working completely fine. So that's really good. Maybe in future we might be seeing some better fixes, and I guess these fixes will be solved. But all in all, it's looking it's looking good. Next up, we have AMD posting this, which is kind of funny because they're uh, they're being uh, not really funny. They're being honest about it, but doesn't really help their case because if you look into it, this is the average gaming performance across six games, and well, we don't know. Uh, we do know these games right here: the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the Callisto Protocol, Grand Theft Auto, Apex Legends, Valorant, and Overwatch 2. Mostly competitive titles, it seems like. And if you look into it, uh, it just re doesn't really help their case here because, well, in in 4K, if you look into it, 7900 XT getting. Around 180 FPS average that cost 899, but RX 6950 XT according to the present pricing in US, I believe the 699 is the pricing, and it can be uh, it can deliver 168. So like a, a, a like I said, it's not a huge increase in performance, and you're paying more than 200 or exactly 200 dollars roughly. So it's not a good trade off, is it? So. So yeah, like it's just 180 to 168. It just doesn't really kind of make sense because, like, you're paying 200 premium and you're not getting the required. Well, for the 7900 XTX, however, 220 FPS is quite, like, it's a huge leap here, as you can see, 168 compared to 220. If you have to compare the top of the line, you know, but for the RX 7900 XT, well, I guess you should have some architecture. Like, it's it should be. It should be around at least 40%, you know, because it's a better t architecture, you know, like, it just doesn't really make sense to even buy 7900 XT for 899 because it's not delivering enough. And I guess it's, it's not scaling good enough. And if you look into it, they also have the price to performance chart here. Well, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I said. They're being honest about it, but also, like, also this is 1080p data, so... CPU matters the most, but still, if you look into it, that 6950 XT is a better value than even the 7900 XTX. So, yeah, that, they're not doing so well. And that kind of shows, even in the market, the AMD GPUs are not getting sold that much, which is kind of saddening, I have to say, because, well, AMD has been doing so good, and now this generation, the first MCN GPU, and it just didn't really work out properly. Next up, we have PC Games Hardware. They just uploaded this video here, and well, this is the a test for the Forsaken or, or Forspoken, not Forsaken. I misspelled it or mispronounced it, I should say. Well, Forsaken is a really common word, but Forspoken. This game just launched, and it supports direct as storage, which is crazy. I know, but there's a caveat here, and that is it is impacting performance, which is not good, because well, if you look into this, is a PCIe 4.0, uh, this side, and the, and the right side is PCIe 3.0, and well, the game performance here is the same, around uh, 61 FPS, and in this case, for the PCIe 4.0, it's getting 59 FPS, so, well, the frame time for this one is better, 16.4, but that one is 18.5, but still, it's not a huge loss, but we do have something, and well, if you look into it, this is the, well, they compared the well, without the direct storage support, like if you're using a SATA SSD, that will not support direct storage, right? But if you're using the PCIe 3.0 and 4.0, that would support direct storage. But the problem is, if you're using the SATA, right? This is the SATA data here. It's getting 83 FPS on average versus using PCIe 3.0 and PCIe 4.0, which is around, as you can see, like 
75 to 83, around 8 FPS decrease here, as you can see. So it's decreasing the performance. And according to the PC games hardware here, it's t around 10% if you combine all the results. Like, it's, yeah, this, so for some reason it's losing performance when you use DirectX storage. Because, you know, SATA doesn't support DirectX storage, but the performance is superior. And, well, according to PC hardware, I guess, they're, they're saying that, that uh, as this direct storage literally, you know, uses the GPU a lot, and that's why I believe GPU get is having a more load, which probably resulting in performance loss. But I don't think that is a, a good trade-off because, you know, yeah, load time will be faster, sure, but you load only once and then you run the game for hours, right? So I, I don't know, like the performance loss is kind of not that ba uh, good, I should say, because, you know, if you're losing performance, then what's the... That's not good news. And also, they're using RTX 4090 here, so you need to keep that in mind. Damn, Forspoken is really a demanding game for RTX 4090. All right, that is it for today. What do you think about Intel? Are GPUs getting new drivers? Will they be enough? And will they increase performance? I hope so, because Intel GPUs, their pricing are appealing, their performance ain't. So, yeah. And also, what do you think about the DirectX storage? Like, losing performance, is it a deal breaker? Or do you, do you prefer faster load times comment below and of course like share and subscribe i'll see you guys tomorrow or in the next video